So you want the right coax. That's a good thing to do. What are you going to do with the left coax? Hello, electronics enthusiasts and amateur radio operators the world over. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I also write the Ask Dave column for QST. And if you send a question to Ask Dave, all one word, at ARRL.org, it will come right to me, right here, and I will either answer it in that column or on one of these videos, or if it's something pretty straightforward, I'll just send you a real simple answer. Sometimes I answer multiple ways. Okay, we try and get you answered. So let's take a look at this one from K0TKR, Tim Bratton. Okay, he says, I am really sold on parallel transmission lines. These are so-called open wire transmission lines. Really what they are is parallel wire. This one is called window line, and it has to be a balanced feed because you don't attach one side to ground and the other to the center conductor. If you go from your normal radio, you need a balance of some sort to convert from the 50 ohm cable to the 450 ohm cable. And yes, that is a nine to one balance, not a four to one balance, okay? And then at the other end, before you go to your antenna, you need another balance if you're going to be feeding like a beam or something like that, or a hex beam, or, you can just attach each one of these wires to each side of a dipole and then dial it in on your antenna tuner. Note that it will work at its base frequency. For example, it's a 40 meter dipole. Okay, it'll work on that. You might be able to get it to resonate on 20 meters. Uh, certainly it will do so on 15. You might get it on some of the work bands and so on if you have a really good wide range tuner. Otherwise, if you go from 50 ohms to an antenna that's 50 ohms, you need a 9 to 1 balance at each end. Okay, 1 to 9, 9 to 1. This right here is called twin lead. It's 300 ohms. So you need a 6 to 1 balance, and 6 to 1 balance is a little hard to build. You've got to play some games to get the right ratio in that. 9 to 1 are easy to use because you just use a 3 to 1 ratio in the transformer, but the impedance matches the square of that, which is 9 to 1. Okay, I'd go with the latter line, all right? Twin lead's a little hard to get hold of and not in much use these days. It used to be super common. You could get it in any store, but um, the old TVs with the old antennas are long gone. He says that he has a 300-foot horizontal loop with homemade open wire ladder line feeding into an MFJ 974 HB balanced line tuner. I think the H stands for high power. Works great on 80 to 6 meters. Yes, it does. My VHF UHF antenna is a Diamond X300 and a DXE400 max coax. That's DXE equivalent to times microwave. I don't know who makes it. These days, you might as well go ahead and get the times microwave cable. Okay, which has become a lot more common now that a lot of hams have moved to it. At 100 feet long, I'm reading that there's 1.8 dB loss at 150 megahertz. That's not even half of the power. That's less than that. And, uh, and 3.3 dB at 450 megahertz. So for our 70 centimeter band, yes, that's over half the power. You start with 40 watts, you end up with 20 watts at the antenna to be radiated. But the problem is, if you receive a signal, you lose half the signal coming back the other way. Now, in most cases, this is not a problem because if you're working FM locally, the signal to noise ratio is usually pretty high. And losing half of that is not that much of an issue. So I run fairly short runs right outside the window. I've got my VHF antenna up on the roof. I've got my UHF antenna looking straight down the valley toward where the repeaters are in Grand Junction. Now, do you want to do ladder line for those? You've got the same problem. You've got to go from your 50 ohms to 450 ohms and 450 ohms back to 50 ohms. Some antenna tuners like this one right here. This is an MFJ901B. This was my very first piece of equipment that I purchased about 40 years ago. 
okay? And it has n the normal coax, or you can use balanced line in here, or you can have a single wire, uh, long wire from here, and this is for ground. Okay, and there, there's instructions on how to use this. If you're going to do balanced, it's this. But this is only a 4 to 1 ballon in here. It's not a 9 to 1 ballon. Now, another thing that I want to point out is if you bring this into your shack, you have to keep in mind that the electric field actually travels around and th between the wires in here. Okay, in coax, the field is entirely in the coax, assuming it's good coax. And if you use tr transmission line like this, it's around it. And if for any reason it's the slightest bit unbalanced, it will radiate like an antenna. So you're bringing that into the shack, and you're going to end up with that thing radiating RFI in your shack. I ran into that problem. So what I did was I moved the ballon all the way up to where the antenna was. The other issue is balance at VHF and UHF, okay? Because they will act differently from a balance at HF because the frequencies are so much higher. In fact, you'll be wanting to use different types of toroids. The windings might be just a single loop for the 50 ohm and a few loops for the 450 ohm. I would recommend you really researching this if you're going to do balance at VHF or UHF. They're different animals. They're going to behave differently, okay? But can it be done? Yes, it can be done. And if your antenna is a long ways away, this is the way to go. The other thing you can do at the far end is create a 450 ohm antenna, okay? Look in the antenna handbook, figure out how to do that. You can do little matching stubs, you can do tiny transformers, you can do all kinds of things. It'll be a balanced antenna, but then you can feed it directly on this end, and then you can take this into your tuner. Now, one last thing. There are remote antenna tuners. The idea for doing this is to get it outside your shack, okay? And LDG makes them, MFJ used to, but they've stopped. So LDG is probably your vendor of choice. Uh, call DX Engineering, tell them what you're trying to do, and they'll get you the right model uh, for that. Now, all of these remote antenna tuners require a little power supply inside the shack to feed the needs of that antenna tuner that's away from your shack. And they use this with something called a bias T, and it'll come with the tuner. Okay, so you don't have to spring forward or understand it very much. Just follow the instructions. I use a bias T on my receive antennas, receive only antennas. So there you have it. That's a lot, but I want to tell you even more. We have a $2 bill special. Okay, this is a $2 bill. You don't see them very often. I was down at the bank today and got a few more of these. They're like they've been iron flat. They're beautiful. These are rarely circulated, but they are legitimate U.S. currency. And why two? That's to remind you that if you go to Patreon, at patreon.com slash ke0og, you will find a level every month you support me for $2. First month, we'll send you a $2 bill. You can show to all your friends at your ham club the $2 bill that you got for supporting KE0OG. Also, if you join the channel on YouTube or you do this via our PayPal link, $2 bill comes to you. Be sure to include your call sign somewhere in the information that you put in because that's how we track your address to make sure you get this nice, crisp $2 bill. And there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.